So those of you who heard this before, my apologies. I've been preaching this for, I think, 10 years now. Watch out for my ConMed uh, concerns because I am a consultant for ConMed. The rest are non-applicable. Um, here we go. Oh, did I, say op did I say operation was good earlier? Remember, that was insertional. Now we're non-insertional. Poor David Beckham here. Look at him. He just had someone kick him from behind, or at least he thinks that. Ruptured tendon gone. All right, so why do we operate? Why do all you guys want to operate in America? Holy Moses, they must be paying you well. Anyway, operations are good. They are good because they put sutures across that tendon and hold it together. And that's good if you're going to be reckless and you don't have a physiotherapist like I have, Daniela, to do it right. You need a great relationship with your physiotherapist and great communication to make sure you avoid the pitfalls and non operatives. If you don't have that, throw your sutures in, give them a complication, your choice. The complications rise because you strip the blood supply and you get a higher rate of complications. Oh, evidence. Yeah, now evidence is important. I'm going to use it. I can be selective. Let's first look at the best RCT. We all seen this. I'll go through it quick. Kevin Willett's study over the, for the late Sandy Kirk Kirkley, who died tragically in a plane crash. Kevin Willits took the study to fruition. 144 randomized patients, the best RCT done to date. The uh, groups very equal, primary outcome measure, no significant difference in re-rupture. There was no difference in the secondary outcomes except for isokinetic strength at high test velocities. So there's a slight edge to maybe your high level athletes and we can get to that. But remember, complications are higher. If you're gonna recommend an operation, you better tell your patients as complications are higher because the lawyers are watching. 15% rate in operative, about 5% in non-operative. And why would you do something like this to a patient who doesn't need it? If they need it and they want it, give it to them, but let them choose. The most recent meta-analysis, happy to say this was done by my resident at Harvard University as her master's. What she did was really clever. She took all the randomized control dates to date and she showed that yes, indeed, you Americans are right. There's an increase in the re-rupture rate and there's decreased strength, but there's lower complication rates with non-op. Now, what my student did even smarter was she went back to the data and she said, now I'm gonna look at the randomized control tries that use functional rehabilitation. The other ones did it. They didn't have Daniela. They did it poorly. What happened? Those differences disappeared. There was no difference in re-rupture. There was no difference in strength, calf size, and function. And of course, the complications were lower. Now let's look at some more modern evidence, the largest consecutive case series. This is 945 consecutive patients treated non-operatively. Look at their numbers. The re-ruptures for all comers, acute presentations, and delayed were all the same as if you did operative treatment. Why are you giving them the risk to new complications. The conclusion for these authors was re-rupture rates are similar or maybe even better with non-operative treatment. So the best RCT says non-op, most recent analysis says non-op, largest consecutive therapy says non-op, they're all the same. Both treatments work and you save money and complications. Why won't you do it? Why won't you do non-operative treatment? Well, again, remember, if you can't do it well, if you don't got a great physical therapist and you communicate with them, an operation is better. Do an operation. But don't worry about the gap. Gap? What's this about the gap? Willits ignored the gap. In his randomized control trial, it was all clinical. He didn't even look at the size of the tendon rupture at all. They didn't even do an MRI. It was a clinical diagnosis. Here's someone who neglected his Achilles tendon. He showed up in my office six weeks later walking around on it. Yeah, this is a gap. You can see that his Thompson test is negative. He truly has a gap. This is rare if you get to them early. This is rare if you get to them early. Here's another patient. Here's a patient who reported to my clinic two weeks after being in a plantar flex cast. We got to him in the eMERGE within 48 hours. He had his, he had his MRI the day before we did the surgery because he wanted surgery. Yes, I do surgery on people that want it. The, the, MRI, the radiologist said there was no discernible residual fibers. Look what I saw. The tendon is healed after two weeks. What am I in there doing? 
how embarrassing. I warned him. We threw in some seltzers and make it, made it better. Look at this tendon. This tendon before surgery, another young macho guy who wanted surgery because he knows it's the best. Look what he had. He had a six centimeter gap, said the radiologist. I can't see a gap. Do you see a gap? This was the day earlier. That gap healed in one day. How can you believe that? There is no gap. And we presented this at BOFAST. We had 69 patients at one year follow-up. None lost to follow-up. Average gap side reported by our musculoskeletal radiologists 0.6 0.6 to 10 centimeters, 10 centimeter gaps. When we looked at the outcome, oh, there was no correlation between gap size and clinical outcome. We prefer trauma zone, no gap side. The gap is in knowledge. Okay, patients get a choice. Let them do what they want to do. Make sure you explain the risks and benefits of both sides. Do what you want. Thank you very much.